You mind if I sit on the bed? Not at all. That's why I put Yeah. It's my better sign. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so first question. Three or four years ago, it was announced you were coming back and directing. You redo uh, you shouldn't play with dead things. And yes. then, is this project dead? Is it still not playing? Well, no, no, I have no idea where it is. It's in, it's in limbo somewhere. Because, and Chris, Chris can tell you more about that. Uh, you know, uh, Frank, what's his name? Tom DeFeo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, uh, no. <laughs> All conversations about that just suddenly stopped. Uh, so you're, you, have you done any pre-production on it? Or no. Any sketches, ideas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, is there anything else lined up? Uh, 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 there's a video game called Dead Trigger. They want me to direct the movie version. So we'll see what happens. It says, you know, it's all conversations, no contest. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Well, oh, I thought somebody asked. <laughs> we got we to shout a little louder. Can everybody hear us? Not really. Not really? Okay. okay. I got you. Okay. It'll help if we close that curtain. Yeah, you guys might. Yeah, meanwhile, there's like a 30 foot space above you. <laughs> Why? Oh, that curtain made so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to scream it. <laughs> All right, so I'll try to I'll try to be a bit louder, and then we'll throw it to the audience for questions. Um, next question: Your original debut for directing *Night of Living Dead*. Um, does anyone here have the Blu-ray? Anyone here have the limited? Well, it's not Blu-ray. Okay. Really, you do. A lot of you. Okay. Now, how do you feel about that? Having your work be no, so I, limited that if people want to go buy the Blu-ray, it's done. It's sold out. How do well, you feel that, about that? That one is. I mean, but there's other there's other versions of it out there. You know. What the, there was a lot of uh, talk about it being blue, remember that? Okay. Oh, the chip, yeah. So I watched it and it looked perfect. So I wanted to uh, 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 photograph it and put a picture on Facebook to say, you guys are crazy, look, it's beautiful. So I took a picture of it and it was totally blue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just like every picture that, for some reason it photographs blue, but in person it's fine. <laughs> Okay, and uh, another thing that you were involved in recently, um, the Machete series with Robert Rodriguez. Um, now, that's, I don't know if, if with you guys, I, do, I thought you were killed in the original, your character, Osiris, was killed in the original Machete, then you showed up in, in Machete Kills. Do you, no, do you, you don't film see me, scene? You, you don't see me killed in Machete. Is it just my bad memory? Did no, you? no, no, you don't see me killed. Uh, in the supplementary material is my death scene where they do kill me, okay. but he didn't put it in the movie so he could bring me back from Machete Kills. But no, they slaughtered me. <laughs> <laughs> With that saw, that buzz saw. Well, you, well, it's in the supplementary material. So it seems like you're you're almost like a good luck charm for for Rodriguez. Is that is is he would he call you up and just you sign on site on scenes or a project? Yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. You have to you have to work for Robert as much as possible. We're doing. He said I'm going to be an overlord in next season's uh, From Dust Till Dawn television series. Did you hear me back there? Okay. <laughs> I can tell because you smiled when I said that. <laughs> so then how did you get involved? So obviously from Dust Till Dawn was your debut with that. Yeah. How did you get involved? Did he, did he come to you? Did you audition? No, Quentin, 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 he and Robert, uh, Quentin and Robert sent me uh, the sides, the script. Okay. They wanted me to uh, shoot a video audition. But it was for Frost, the guy that uh, Fred Williamson played. Uh, I was supposed to be him. Because uh, Sex Machine was a big guy and, uh, and Frost is a little guy. And I had been to Vietnam and does that Vietnam speech. But when I got the script, I saw Sex Machine. And then it, it just he had better lines and I just liked the name better. So I did Sex Machine. And when he got the video, you know, they, they laughed and just changed the body types. You know. So I became Sex Machine. So another thing, um, recently people might have seen, you had a cameo in Kevin Smith's um, Zack and Mary. Yeah, oh, Zack and Mary. <laughs> Zack and Mary. Yeah. That's it. So and how did that come about? Is that against? They just would call you. No, I replaced. Uh, I replaced George Carlin, who died. Who had died. He originally was going to play that guy, and he shot in Pittsburgh. Kevin Smith shot in Pittsburgh, where I live. So uh, yeah, I just got a call from him to, to do that guy. So you're still a Pittsburgh resident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about your makeup school? I don't know if people know, you run a, a makeup school, uh, obviously with your name on it. There's ads in February every month for it. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about your involvement with that school? Yeah, sure. You, are you aware of the school? 
Oh, you are. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's 16 months. It's 16 months. It's a degree program. Parents love the idea that it's a degree program. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only yeah, it's the only makeup school that uh, offers a degree. Um, this uh, 16 months, like I said, and it's like a third uh, less expensive than schools that charge. Uh, well, for 11 weeks or four months. This is 16 months. We're not kidding around. Uh, the, this, the, the student's attitude is, this is school, you know, because we're having so much fun, you know, doing this every day, you know, making it every day, uh, and making their dreams come true, you know, so uh, it's, it's quite a place. Yeah, and shows like, um, I don't know if you're a fan of the show Face Off. Oh, yeah, well, every time you see Face Off, uh, at least half of them are students from my school. Face Off comes to my school to audition uh, artists for that show. Uh, the last, if you watch the last season, both those guys that wound up in the finale uh, were students from our school. We haven't won one yet. But <laughs> how close can you get? Two guys, one girl. You know. No, she kicked their asses though. She was well, and how do you feel about about practical makeup effects today? I mean, obviously, it's a, it's not a dying art, but it's a shrinking art. What is your? What is your not, no, not really, not really. Uh, I, you know, I love CGI when it's done well, but. Um, uh, there's three visual effects companies in LA that are just going out of business. Uh, there's this big trend back toward practical effects. In fact, Evil Dead advertised no CGI, this is all practical. J.J. Abrams in the new Star Wars. There's going to be a Yoda puppet. I mean, it's all practical stuff. You know? So and there's a collective desire to go back to that. Or the best ones are when it's a combination of practical effects and, and CGI. That's the best. But I wish I had that tool when I was trying to hide an edge or, you know, building a, a character or something. Okay, so, and another thing, um, for the longest time I thought you had officially retired from doing any kind of makeup effects, and apparently that's not the, that's no, not the I case. have a school, I have a school that teaches it, you know, uh, every day, you know, all year round. And you still get offers? You still get calls? Oh yeah, I turn it over to my students. So, I mean, I might consult on one, I'm doing one in Budapest coming up, where I'll just consult with an effects team that they have to design stuff, you know, for the, for the movie. Mm. And another thing that you don't get a lot of credit for, your stunt work, your history of stunt work. Well, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I'll be 68 on Monday. I don't, don't do, uh, yeah, I don't do stunts anymore. No more stunts anymore. Yeah. But uh, how now, again, I'm, I'm really concerned with your acting. I mean, do you get frequent offers? Is that something that's taken over your time more? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do, yeah, I don't do effects for a living. I just concentrate on acting and directing, you know. Um, I'm playing, I'm playing, I can't think of it right now, but yeah, I forgot half of my life. <laughs> I can't think of it, uh, yeah, something's coming up, or yeah, it's an acting gig. I mean, but I, you know, I don't even think about this stuff until I get close enough to it to have to worry about it. You know, too much going on. Now, Are we going to open up questions? Please? I think, uh, I have one more question, just, uh, just uh, uh, a selfish question again. So we're going to go all the way back. I have to give you credit. You. Way back to the Friday the 13th franchise, you were maybe the one person to say having Jason come back in the second one as a villain was a, was a bad idea. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, I have to give you a lot of credit for that. Do you regret not going back to the second one? Do you, no, do you, no. Do you have no, no regrets? No, no, I got to do the burning instead. You know, the burning was one of the better ones. Um, they, they, they offered me part two, and you know, I, I turned it down because they had Jason running around. Because, you know, he. He was a kid that died in the first movie. The mother was the killer. Didn't make any sense, you know. So they didn't offer me part three, but they offered me part four because the series was waning, you know. But it made so much money. That's why you're going to see Friday the 13th, you know, part 13. Did you, you see the newest one? The last nice one? It was the dumbest one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there were lines in there like, your tits are stupendous. <laughs> like, who's writing, you know? <laughs> Huh? First 20 minutes are great. The opening. The opening? I remember. But I, I know later on, a guy drops his gun in the puddle of water or something, yeah. and he actually goes down there and says, Where are you, gun? <laughs> you know, he's talking to you. Anyway, so it was really stupid. Plus, you know, they were putting Jason's head on the shredder, the mask flies off, they didn't show you the great makeup that was done on him. And then, of course, they drag him a hundred yards, these kids, you know, to throw him in the lake, simply because, so you could look at your watch and go, well, when's he going to pop back up? Because <laughs> they're trying to duplicate the scare scene from the first one, and they failed miserably. Yeah. 
I stopped watching them after part five. In part five, the ashtray was Jason. His spirit kept invading stuff, you know. <laughs> And, and sorry, one one more question, Mike. Now your designs for Jason, obviously the child Jason. You see that on T-shirts everywhere. You see that in pictures. Do you see any royalties from that? You no, see of it course. Not. No. <laughs> Fair enough. That would have been cool though to even think. We even think about merchandising. You might see, you know, back then for that stuff. All right, so let's uh, let's throw it to the floor. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Savini's long and very? You asked career? me one at the table. I asked you to save it for here. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it was it was about the uh, the uh, dog attack scene. In oh, in Django, Django Unchained. Yeah, yeah. Dog attacks. Okay, so uh, um, the the slave is up the tree. You know, we got these big attacks. Well, first of all, the dogs. We had a 15-minute training session with the dogs. Um, Bullet and Spike, I think, was the name. Uh, the trainer would say, stand up, sit down, move left, move right, open your mouth, you know, roll over. The dog would do whatever he said, like the dog understood English, you know. But he said, look, I'm going to make the dog go crazy now, and I want you to hold him back, okay? The dog dragged me 30 feet on my knees into the swamp in New Orleans. It was like holding a car back, you know. So. And I finally was able to, you know, brace myself and hold these dogs back, you know. So, uh, uh, we had the slave up the tree, the dogs are screaming after him, and um, the guy next to me is supposed to say, uh, oh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio pulls up in the wagon. He says, shut these dogs up, I can't hear myself think or something. The guy next to me is supposed to say, let's get these dogs out of here, and he's just, he's just starts screaming, and he's yelling, fuck! And I turn, and the dogs are attacking him. <laughs> they've, torn his, they've torn his pants off in the back. They, they bit him on his ass and dragged him to the ground by the, his ass cheek. <laughs> so Quentin calls lunch, and we all go to <laughs> But we know this guy's going to go to the hospital, you know. So uh, the guy comes back, new wardrobe and everything, and we do the, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio pulls up and says that. And he says, let's get these dogs out of here. So I went to reach for the, the leash of his dogs, and now the dogs have attacked me. But I didn't stop, I just kept doing the scene with this dog like hanging off my arm and Quentin yell cut. Uh, the, see, the, the trainer uh, has to be in front of uh, uh, the dog. So the trainer was over here, and that's why they attacked this guy, okay? So we, I mean, we both wound up going to the hospital that night for tetanus shots because of those dogs. But, but there was something else you asked me um, in particular. Uh, I, just, I just asked if you had any of the uh, effects of oh, matter. No, no, no. Purely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's what reminded me of this. Um, when they brought the slave down from the tree, they attached a fake arm to him that the dogs were to rip off. Okay. Um, so, uh, and he had his real arm behind his back. So every time they did the shot, you could see his real arm. And Quentin was getting... You know, really frustrated, like seven takes, and this guy's real arm kept popping up with the rubber arm. So I didn't want to say anything because it's KB, it's great to get he's my friends, you know. I don't want to impose, you know, or take, you know. But, but Quentin walked by, and, you know, and I, I said to him, Do you remember when I did that effect in Day of the Dead? And he said, Yes, of course, because Quentin has seen every movie ever made, you know. They said, well, I dug a hole under the guy, and so the fake arm, his real arm goes into the hole, and all you see is his body and then the fake arm. He said, oh, that's great. He said, it's great. What about if the dogs drag him? Well, you, you put one of those anchors in the hole so the guy can hold on. And hold his anyway, they did it. Well, no. I said to him, but, but don't say I said anything, okay? Because I, you know, I don't want to tell you. So he goes back to the set, and he says, uh, why don't you guys dig a hole under him, you know? They kind of argued that it wouldn't work. He said, no, 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 just try it, try it, dig a one there. So it worked. It was beautiful in the seven takes, you know. Dog came toward the arm off. You never saw the guy's real one. So about, I don't know, 15 minutes later, I'm standing there, and Quentin walks up behind me, and he, he put something in my hand. And I looked, and it was five bucks. <laughs> he said, uh, we have a tradition on my sets where if, if one department helps another department solve a problem, it's the $5 shot. So I became the $5 hero <laughs> that day. He said, but never before has an expert in that department have come to help me. So, uh, so I was, but the next day, yeah, there's kids in here. Uh, okay. You can say whatever you want on her account. Yeah, right. <laughs> you might want to put those earmuffs on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a video on. No, the, next, the next day I was the, uh, okay, one day I was the $5 shot hero. The very next day, I was the purple penis guy. <laughs> because, I don't know how they do it, 
I don't know where they hide it, you know. But if you fall asleep on a Tarantino set, they inflate this huge purple penis, and they sneak up to you and they take a picture of you. Uh, so, um, I, luckily, I fell asleep forward, and the penis was back here. <laughs> it wasn't like laying back. You know. uh, but anyway, we're in the middle of a swamp. In the swamp, the only hard surface was a few feet on either side of this dirt gravel road. Okay, we're in a swamp, and they bring out a board as big as this wall behind them. It's all the people that, that had the purple penis in their face. Okay? <laughs> so they bring this out to the swamp to ceremoniously add me, you know, the picture to it. Right? So that, that's what it's like being on a, on a Tarantino set. <laughs>